once again just who I am because I need to know. You'll have every failure, God. You'll have every victory.
worship the Lord this morning.
Have you ever found yourself at life or in life just wondering, which way do I go from here? I don't understand it. I've never seen this before. All the friends that told me that I could call on them, they're nowhere to be found. All of the stuff that I told myself, all of the things that I said, I'm strong enough to handle. I'm it seemed like before you know it, all hell breaks loose. And it's at that moment where you have a choice to either give in or say, he won't. He won't. Just say that, those two words. He won't. Come on, now you got to sing it for yourself. I can't sing to you. He won't. You got to sing it like you're really trying to encourage yourself. Say he won't. Come on now. I need you to lift up your voice in here. Say, he won't fail. He won't fail. God, I know you won't fail. Let's sing that whole chorus. Say, he won't. He won't. Hey, thank you, Father. He won't. Let's go right here. He won't fail. He won't fail. Say, you won't. Say, you won't. We're talking to God now. Come on, say, you won't. If you believe it, say, you won't fail. You won't fail. One more time. You won't Because children are about to go back to school, and I need to share a revelation that God gave me on this Wednesday about this woman. When I was about 10 years old, much of my childhood I spent with breathing issues. At one point, they thought I had tuberculosis, and my whole family was so sick. They, they couldn't tell what was wrong. And I remember at one point, my mother told me that they took me to a revivalist who prayed for me, and I was supernaturally healed probably about eight years old. A few years later, the cats came back, and my mother told me, she said, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. And she says, and you know enough of the gospel to stand on this word. She, she said, she says, God's not just around you. He's not just looking at you. He is in you. And I remember I laid my head on the pillow, having difficulty breathing, having to stand on that word. He's in me. 
touching me. He's not just around me. He is in me. And so I discovered as a child, not much older than these children, that when I walk this earth, literally God walks with me because he's in me. That spirits move because he's in me. That's why I don't have to feel discouraged. That's why I don't fear when the shadows fall. So why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely?
parenting to children. And I just praise you, Lord Jesus, that the awareness of Jesus being in them, in them, it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is God in us, for in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Watching the sparrows, <laughs> he's alive. He's alive. Amen. No, he's alive. And I know he's alive. And I know he's alive. Amen. five somebody, share a smile with somebody close to you, find some, that's right, yeah, start it off, good to see you today, God bless you, good stuff, good stuff, thank you Lord, It's so good to see you today. Amen. Okay. I didn't know if I needed to move more carefully or not. It's, it's so good to see each of you in the room and those of you who've joined us online. We're glad you're here. Um, we have guests in the room today. We welcome you. We hope you're blessed. Um, uh, mentioned Bailey's grandmother passed away last uh, evening, and we're praying for you. And, and uh, I think she lives in Picayune, but... Uh, our prayers are with you. I know it's not a totally unexpected thing, but uh, it's not ever an easy thing. And so uh, our, our prayers are with you, uh, Bailey. Hey, let's thank our team. Uh, you know, what a, what a great job. Great job leading us in worship today. It's good to have my friend Tony McWilliams here. Tony, is, uh, he's been our friend a long time, been part of our church uh, many years ago, and in fact, some of you remember a few weeks, a number of weeks ago, I shared about uh, 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 Marty on a trip, and when she was a little girl, and the, the, the gas tank messed up and had a little leak, and the dad went out there and looked and 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 uh, saw uh, saw the leak and had the girls chew bubble gum every now and then, had to patch it up and drive a few miles. She tuned in that day. I think maybe the first time they joined in, I happened to be sharing the story, and it's like a God thing, and, and, and they, they've been really just strongly connected with us since. Actually, Michelle lives close out there to where you guys live. Uh, Michelle's here today visiting from Houston, and yeah. Yeah, they just have a good time here. It's a little reunion, hey. I don't blame them, you know. Uh, when you live in Houston, praise God, you won't find somebody, hey, praise God, I've got a friendly face here. It's just driving that little circle all the time you know, around the, the loop. Uh, so uh, uh, he's here today, uh, Tony, and uh, today's Martha's birthday. So, so uh, let me just give a shout out to Marty. Happy birthday to you. We don't do that to everybody, but today's your birthday, so we're going to do it. And Tony's here to, to represent you well. Uh, <clears throat> you know, lots of good things are happening. So your bulletin has a few, few things. If you came today expecting... A snow cone, that's two weeks from today, okay? So you, you heard whet your appetite, man, whet your appetite. I don't know yet what flavors are on it, but after service we'll go out. So invite people. I look at snow cone Sunday. Some people are a little anti-church, but who's anti-snow cone in, in August, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, so that, that's going to be good. The following week after the 6th, uh, on the 13th, my friend Mike Fields, pastor in uh, Vicksburg, pastor of Triumph Church, and a great pastor, great man, great friend. He's going to be here with us, his wife, Zana. We haven't had a lot of outside speakers in since we've been here, um, but he, he will uh, be here, and I, I really want you to 
good to be here. I, I really do. I want him to meet you. Um, other things upcoming, there, your bulletin tells you about them, but uh, I want to get into the uh, teaching today. If you have your outline in the room, it, you have a bulletin, and the back of that bulletin there's an outline, and, and uh, we, we're in a series about moments. And, and look, I know there, first of all, I know there's some other needs. I mentioned Bailey's Grim. I know there are other needs and, and represented in the room, and, and God knows what those are, and we, we want to pray with you about those at the end of the service. If you want to have a special prayer for a need, if you want to represent a need, you come and, and we'll, uh, we'll be here to, uh, to pray with you about those things. <clears throat> but we're talking about moments, and it's kind of been one of the longer series that we've done, but there are a lot of moments and a lot of things to talk about. If you give me one minute for review, uh, let me just say to you, very simply, we measure our life in years, but we treasure our lives in moments. And we're on our way to talk about this thing called momentum. That's really what I want to talk about. But we can't talk about momentum without first getting a moment at the front of it. And moments kick momentum off. And so a little spark starts a fire. And, and I, I'm, I'm a seasoned person. I love a season. I love when, when we extend the moment. We're going to talk about that a little today and a little bit more when we get past the series. Because I, I love seasons. But sometimes you've got to get a push to get something moving. You, you gotta, you got to shock the pool before you can maintain it. And so we, we ask God to do some things in our marriages and God to do some things in our church and God to do some things in our family and, and, and maybe in your business or the direction of your life. Sometimes you, you, need, to, you need some moments. And, and so we categorize those moments into four things. They're not the exhaustive list. They're the list we've chosen and come up with. They're memory moments and crisis moments and defining moments, and then God moments. Sometimes those are, uh, they all overlap, okay? So it's not just uh, which one is it. Sometimes the defining moment is the obvious God moment. And, and I believe that you're, I believe you're experiencing these moments, and you recognize them more as we're going through the series. In fact, we talked uh, the past couple of weeks about some of the critical mistakes we make dealing with moments. Um, and, and the first thing we said is we don't prepare for them adequately. We just, we're not ready when they come. It, it happens and, you know, we just, we just, well, I wish I had prepared for that. It may be a test. It may be a, a defining moment in life. But, uh, you know, you need to get ready before uh, the, the decree comes not to pray. And Daniel was ready. Daniel stayed ready. And when the moment came, he was up to it. He was, it was a defining moment for him, but he was prepared for that moment. And, and then the second thing is we said is we fail to recognize them. Sometimes we're in, in that moment and we don't, even, we don't even realize how special the moment is until it's over. And we look back and thought, boy, I wish I had really spent more time talking with that person. I really wish that I had told her or told him that I loved him and I loved her like I really did. I really wish that I had spent more time with my father or my mother. and I, I really wish I had made time. And, and we didn't realize how important the moments were until the moments are gone. So today I want to finish, uh, uh, I want to move further. I'm not going to finish the series, but I, I want to talk to you about another critical thing uh, that I think happens with moments where we miss it. And that is we fail to savor the moment. We fail to savor the moment. We rush through moments we ought to just pause and stay there a while. Now to savor the moment means to, to consciously notice what's going right, be aware of, of this good moment, and give it some focused appreciation. It means both maximizing the moment by that awareness and focused appreciation, and it also means maximizing the moment by making it last as long as we can, and, and yet knowing that it isn't going to be eternal. It, it's, it's, not, it's not forever, okay? Um, all kind of singers sing about this. I, I think Celine Dion uh, saying, how does a moment last forever? Well, uh, a moment doesn't last forever until it turns into a, a memory. And then we said we have memory moments and we go back, but uh, ever, I, I guess so many songs are about this. Uh, Let's make this moment last. Can we make this moment uh, be forever? Does this moment have to end? 
Let me tell you up front today, moments always end. Always. They may live on in another form called memories, but they're called moments. They're not called forevers. They're called moments. So let me, let me give you a, a little um, a principle here, and I want you to lock this in. And let's, let's just put it, let's get, get it out, fill in a blank or two if you have those, and or write it down at home, write it down uh, on your mind if you don't have a pen and paper close by at home. But nothing on earth is permanently perfect. But there are a few perfect moments. Nothing on earth is permanently perfect, but there are some perfect moments. Now listen, heaven is a place of permanent perfection. Heaven is a place of permanent perfection. There is no sickness to interrupt, praise God. No cancer to have to, no treatments to have to deal with. No death, Bailey. No loss of a loved one, no tragedy, no tears, no taxes. Well, I got the best response out of that, I think, praise God. Y'all understand? We, look, we, look, we need to get this, whether it's with our church, with our families, with our uh, kids, with our jobs, there is nothing that is permanently perfect. So savor the moments that get close to it. <laughs> Let me just say here, parenthetically, but don't use perfect moments as a measurement against every other moment. Thank God when, boy, they were just, well, every week of your marriage isn't going to be honeymoon week. Okay? Got to go back, go to work. Got a lot of things, things going wrong. The, 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 the car's not going to break down. The, 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 the toilet's going to stop up. I mean, there's just all kind of things. And, and, and it, well, that's not a perfect moment. Okay? And so if we're not careful, we'll measure, uh, we'll take a golfer hits one good shot 18 years ago with his three wood and he now if he doesn't hit that perfect shot every time he gets mad because he's measuring now against that one perfect moment that happened. It, it just, it's just not going to happen again and again and again. Okay? Now, even when Jesus was here on earth, there were a lot of perfect moments like the Mount of Transfiguration, an incredible uh, uh, moment. But they didn't stay there. The moment came to, to an end, as did every moment that we uh, treasure from the New Testament church history. Quit focusing. Key, key here. I want you to get this. Quit focusing on the fact that the moment had to end and focus more on the blessing of experiencing the moment you had. Now, I'm, I told you soon I, I want to talk about lengthening the special moment of the season, but there is no perfect life, and all perfection here has to end. We agonize, we hurt when we lose a, a, a grandparent or a parent or a spouse or, God forbid, a child or someone that was a lifelong friend. But that happens. It's, it's you know, someone asked me along, uh, I remember a few a number of years ago, they asked me, what? young lady did, why her papa had to die, and, and it was an honest question, but in her case, I was like, honey, papa was like 104, you know, I, I mean, he was blessed with a long, a long life, and she, I mean, she was almost angry and bitter at God because papa died, and, and look, you can spend all your energy and emotion getting angry at God that papa finally died. Or you can thank God for the times you had with them. Look, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Savor the moment. Savor the moment while it's there. Treasure the moment in memory after it's gone. And quit feeling cheated because it had to come to an end. All moments do. If you're in what appears to be a perfect moment, savor it. If you're in a moment that's almost perfect, but there's something a little bit wrong, quit focusing on what's a little bit wrong and enjoy what you got. I've said many times, I don't remember the first time I said it, but I remember, uh, I, I, I just remember when it, it, it hit me that there are some people that can't enjoy a donut because of the hole in the middle. Yeah, yeah, there's some people that just, 
I mean, they, if, can you do, well, if you're in the shop, they're selling the holes to you separate. And you're like, wait a minute, that's supposed to come with my donut, man. You know, it's, you cheap me. Some folks can't enjoy what they have because they're looking at that little bit that's not quite right. Celebrate what is. Savor the moment that is. Jesus, we said, didn't stay on the Mount of Transfiguration. They all came down. It was a moment. Moses didn't, didn't stay in Mount Sinai forever. Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead. Would you like to have been there? That was a moment when Jesus stood there at the tomb and called Lazarus out of the tomb and he came out. He didn't walk out. He came out. He was wrapped. He came out bound in the grave clothes. I mean, he actually kind of hopped out. It was just, you know, it was, it was rejoicing and humorous and scary at the same time. And, and, and then Jesus you know, I've told you, he could have unwrapped them because with a laser could have cut right through the grave clothes. But he did, in fact, he didn't roll the stone away. He, he let them do what they could do, and he did what they couldn't do. And when he had done what they couldn't do and called them out, he told them, loose them and let them go. And it was a few brave people who walked up and let them loose. But you know what? I know this isn't going to come as a shock to you. Lazarus died again. That's right. And they buried him for good. Look, let's celebrate the wonderful moments we had with Lazarus. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me shift a little bit. Let's talk about something a little more uh, e easier to perhaps talk about. Let's talk about eating. Anybody want to talk about eating? Oh, don't look at me like you don't think about this all the time. Is there anybody else in here? I'm confess, anybody else in here that's guilty of eating too fast? I, I, okay. I'm not saying going a little fast. I'm saying eating too fast. There's a difference between wolfing down your food, military style. Oh, Ben, you, even you that were in the military, you were taught to eat like this, and savoring each bite. We had a stray a dog come up one time, <clears throat> and uh, we had hamburgers that night. We had a, a leftover hamburger, and we tossed it to him and, and declared before it hit the ground, he had caught it and swallowed it. We call him Bullet because he ate so fast. <clears throat> and uh, that's the way some people, some of us eat. We, it, and it doesn't matter. You can have a... I, I think there's some people could eat the world's most expensive meal and they'd eat, no, 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 no. We've got we to gotta savor each bite. Listen, take each bite like it's the first of the day and like it's the last bite you're going to have all day. And let it last. Let it linger. Don't check. Some of you are already at the restaurant. I'm talking now and some of you have already left me. Don't do that. Come back to me. What we have won't always be. So let's savor the moment. There will come a day, I plan to be here a while, but there will come a day I won't walk up to the pulpit at the end of worship. Somebody else will be there. There will come a day somebody else will sit in those seats where you are. Things won't always be as they are. So take a moment and drink it in. Take a moment and appreciate what's around you. And that's hard because we live a, in a rushed society. We've got things scheduled and, and we rush from this to that and most of us, if we don't schedule some non-rush time, we'll always feel rushed. We, we go to the restaurant and eat and many of us eat our salad, but we're not thinking about the salad. We're thinking about what's coming next. We eat the salad because they're coming. Hurry, hurry, eat the salad so we'll have room when they come with the other food. When they get the chicken there, we go eat the chicken or the steak real quick because of the dessert. And we're thinking about what we're having for dessert. And soon we eat dessert. We need to get up. Somebody else needs a, needs a table so we can get out. And we got to we got to go by the Walmart on the way home. And we've got things and we've got places. And, and, and sometimes... We just need to savor the moment and sip the drink instead of gulp it. Now, <clears throat> now there's a balance in everything. Let me, let me just talk. I'm talking from my heart to you. And, and 
it's, it's hard to get us from the rush mindset into this. But this is what we did during worship a few minutes ago. We didn't just start a song and finish it. We, we just kind of lingered for a while. I want to talk about lingering in just a minute. Balance is important, and I know that. And I, and I hope when I say this, you understand the balance of what I'm talking about because it's good to look forward. I've already talked to you about no cones. I've talked to you about all this. We've talked about hell fighters coming. We've got some things we look forward, but we glance at them. We don't live in the someday mental mindset and find our happiness there. Well, when I graduate, I'll be happy. When I get a job, I, when I retire, I'll be happy. When I get married, I'll be happy. When I get divorced, I'll be happy. When I get the kids born in the, in the oh, we just had kids, I'll be happy. When I get these kids in school, I'll be happy. When I get these kids in college, I'll be happy. When these kids get out of this house, I'll be happy. Oh, I wish they'd bring some grandkids. When I had grandkids, I'll be happy. Oh, when they come pick up these grandkids, I'll be happy. And look, it's just... Uh, it's, we live in this one day and, 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 and our happiness is out there somewhere and we're always reaching forward. But it's, it's, I think you got it. Likewise, looking back is good. Nostalgia is good. And the older I get, the more nostalgic I seem to become. The more I, I reflect on thoughts and old times and memories and and, and, and nostalgia is good and it's healthy until it isn't. Because reflection is good, but the truth is there's no future in the past. Sometimes we remember the past and we remember it too fondly. And we want to go back to it. And first of all, we ain't going back. We can't. But sometimes we forget some of the things in the past and we just... Pick some good things, and, they, and that's okay until it, it overtakes us. And that's what happened to Israel. Israel had come out of Egypt. They'd been in, in Egyptian bondage for 400 years. They had been slaves. They were brick bakers, and they had increased the task on them, and, and, and it was just cheap labor. And, and, and so in Numbers 11, let me just read you just a little bit. The people complained about their hardships of the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. And fire from the Lord came, burned among them, consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. And when the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. So that place was called Tab Tabera because fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rabble with them, there's always a few folk that calls them rabble here, began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. It made it sound good. Let's go back for lunch. They left out the slavery part. <laughs> Did you notice that? They left out, the, and we've got to have two tons of bricks by, by supper. They left that out. We just, and, and what they said is, remember, we used to eat fish and it didn't cost us anything. Let me just say to you, when the, go, when the government is providing your food free, you're dependent on them and they control you. And that's what was happening. Oh, it didn't cost us a thing. No, it cost you everything. Are you listening to me? It cost you everything. And so, God, listen. God has delivered some of us from some things that ever now and then we want to go back to. And I see this with people with addictions in life. God delivers you. Don't, don't look back to where, don't, don't think about, don't entertain the thoughts of going back to places that were harmful to you and they caused you pain. And, and there are some nice little moments that your mind can, can, can recall. But don't forget the slavery. Don't forget the bondage. Don't forget what you uh, had to deal with in the pain from that place as it relates to the church and the world around us. Some of us, and I understand it, I get it, I do. I do too sometimes. Some of us would like to go back to an earlier time. But we can't rewind the clock. We don't have a time transport machine. It's like... Um, When, when in Joshua 1, uh, I won't go there, but Joshua 1, the first verse starts out, because Moses had died, Joshua would be a new leader. And the first verse says this, after, now it came to pass after the death of Moses, 
uh, the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. In other words, that's ended. Now, it was actually more than a moment. It was a season. But sometimes we have to be reminded that's, that's over. I, look, I wish our world were different. I, I'm, a little, I'm, I'm a little concerned about artificial intelligence going forward, to be honest with you. I'm not going to spend my time talking to you, but I'm just telling you, I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned that the, we as a church and a world, we're unprepared. I, I'm just, just saying to you, there, there's, there's issues that's coming. Maybe we'll talk about it in some form someday, but it's, it's, going, to be a, it's going to change. It's, it's going to change our world like the computer changed our world. Just telling you. Our world's not going, but there's a lot of our world I'm not happy with. I don't, I don't like. I don't like a lot of what's, and I think we can change what we can change and be, in, be salt, be an influencer where we are. But some things aren't going back. And so we need to learn. Uh, uh, and look, some changes, whether it's in the, in the world or in the church, some changes are good, some changes are, and some it's a matter of perspective. What some think is a terrible thing, others see as a good thing. And so it's, it's, it's a matter of perspective. Um, but we think back. I think back. Let, let, me, let me say this. Let me use Sister Barbara. She would, didn't plan on me doing this. I didn't tell her. Didn't warn her. Um, she, she has, first of all, I, I want to say to you, Sister Barbara, I would never say or do anything uh, to do anything less than honor you. And Sister Ruby too. Just, uh, you, you deserve honor. Uh, in fact, Sister Barbara told me that the worship service last Sunday blessed her so much and if it wasn't for that, she didn't know how she's going to make through the week. And then she cited some of the things she had to deal with through the week and how the service last Sunday, the worship service was so meaningful to her. I did have a couple people tell me they were going to send send me bills for their makeup uh, because of the tears. They, they washed a bunch away. <clears throat> and I believe she has, uh, Sister Barbara has shown me, us, nothing but respect in our time here. And boy, that time has gone by faster than we realize. I think she appreciates us being here. But I want to tell you what I think is a truth. It may not be the truth, but here's what I think. I think she would much rather have her husband standing in this pulpit today, healthy, and pastoring this church and preaching to this church. I'm not offended by that. Bailey, yeah, you, yeah, first of all, Lexi, you're doing an incredible job putting all the music together. Bailey, you're an incredible uh, on this keyboard. And uh, man, you, you have a gift that's that's I said insane. Uh, uh, that may not be a good word, but I think it's, I think you understand. And I don't think you'll be offended by this, but you know what? I would, I would rather have my brother playing here today than, than you play. You hear me? But Bailey, he ain't coming back. See, what happens is sometimes we long for moments that we're never going to go back. We all wish things could be a little different. But we don't have a time transport machine. Y you know, um, well, thoughts and feelings and emotions are kind of rush over me. I, I, I know that... Um, Harold and Sarah, you like the like some of the others. You've been in church for a while. You've had a you've had a few. Um, well, the church. I, I I enjoy the church I grew up in. I'm glad that we're not like that exactly. But I miss some of those days and moments that we had. I remember them. The, the, the church has the church has changed, Ruby, and, and especially with y'all being in the root of this church for so many years. Our church styles, I think I can say this. If 
you, you probably wish the church style sometimes a lot different than what it is. I understand that. I get that. You, you probably do too. Bailey, you were raised in a little different type of church than, than, than I was even. And you probably wish it was, you know, we all have, we all have these, these deals. But the truth, but let, let, me t- let me tell you what I know. Let me say this, and then I'll jump on. What I do think you appreciate, and I feel this. I feel this from what you said to me earlier in the day. When you look around, you see the kids around us, and you see life in our lives. You know, I'm willing to make some adjustments in my life in order to see the church go forward and the church go on. And um, this is what happened in... in um, in Haggai, the book of Haggai, uh, the, um, they were going to rebuild the temple. And Solomon's temple had been, in, I mean, how are you going to compare with Solomon's temple? And everybody that remembered, remembered how incredible it was and the glory of that. And there were some people that were saying, you know, it's never going to be like this. And, and Haggai said, hey, some of you guys are remembering how it used to be, don't you? You're, you're remembering how it used to be, and you're saying this isn't, this isn't anything like that. But he said, I'm going to tell you something. The glory of this present house will be greater than that of the former house. And I'm just telling you, in your family, you've, been, you've got some situations, and, and some of you have been hurt. Some of you are, have been through divorce. Some of you are going through divorce. Some of you are in situations where you've, your family member, your family's not like it was. But I want to tell you, God is a healer and God's a, a restorer of hearts. And, and I'm just telling you that, that God's plan for your future, it may not look like, you may look at it and say, it, it'll never be like it was. And, and I'll never have anything like I had in my life. I'll never know love again. Never have any, I've been telling you, God knows where you are. And the blessing of God in this that is now, in this moment, and the moments that are to come, is greater than what you've experienced before. Don't let your past mess up your future. And don't let it mess up your present moment. Enjoy what you have. Thank God for what you used to have. And thank God for what we will have. And what we will have is a little different than what we have now. But let's savor the moment we're in. And thank God for it. And hold close the people God's brought around us. I hope all that came out right. Let, 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 me, let me give you this. I, I need to move on because we've got something else to go to, don't we? I hate to say I need to go on when I'm telling you this is my next point. Learn to linger. I have for a while. Learn to linger. I, and, and I love, you see, in the church group, we... we, we we sang by the hymn book mainly because they didn't have overheads then <laughs> at all. And that's, that's what we use, and that's fine. And we, we add some in a, a lot, and, and we don't do it the same way. But we all started with verse 1, and, and, and all songs seemed like they had four verses, and I don't know why we never sing verse 3. We always skip verse 3 in almost every one of them. You know, I don't know. I didn't put it in there. But at any rate, verse, verse 2 in the music, da, 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 verse 2. Uh, da, da, da. And we started like that, and they all ended. And when they got done, we went to the next verse. Thank you for the song today, Lex. Well, we just lingered a while. Rains came. Wind blew. And, and I know sometimes I, I don't like songs just to have too much repetition and too much repetition. Like, okay, I'm ready. But, man, I, I wanted you to tell me about the rain blowing one more time the rain falling and the wind blowing one more time because the rain has fallen and the wind has blown. Yeah, I'm there, but the house is standing because it's built on the foundation of the rock. And worship, I, I know we, the older we get, the older some of us get, the more ready we are to sit down after a couple of songs of worship. And none of us want to be disrespectful. And, and let, me say, let me say this to you. I think I've said it before, but let me say this to you, especially to any uh, person who uh, you, you have a walker that to assist you in walking, and, and some of you, your knees aren't as good. Listen to me. If your heart is a heart of worship, 
and you need to sit down while we linger a little bit in worship, please do. And please don't look at anybody who does as being disrespectful. You know, I, I preached a lot in the black congregations when I was a child. Because I started when I was six years old. And what I learned real quick, I mean, as about a seven or eight year old, I was preaching, really, preaching several times a month in, or a couple times uh, almost each month in congregations. And 75, 8% of those congregations were African-American congregations when I was um, six, seven, eight, nine years old. And that was like in the mid-60s, okay? And, and so uh, I, I learned to, to love the, the worship culture that was there in most of those churches. But what I learned was this. You could go anywhere in the church if you did this. You could get up and leave. What's it, what do you do, Bailey? That's it, that's it right there. Show us, Bailey. Show us. That's it right there. This right here. You put the finger up right here. You kind of walk like this a little bit. What that means is I'm not mad. I'm coming back. Everything's okay. And it all, it's just really, it's, I'll be back. That's right. I'll, I'll be back. That's right. And uh, brother's not mad. It's okay. It's all good. And so I'm just telling you, you don't have to do this when you sit down. If you want to do that, it's fine. Now, if you're healthy and young, you, you, you stay standing. Because sometimes we just need to linger. It's not like, well, we need to get on. No, no, we just need to stay here. We just need to linger in God's presence. Luke 24, Jesus told his disciples, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry. It's another word for linger. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you indeed with power from on high. About seven days they stay there, we think. It was a few days. And then something happens. Luke 40 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount it with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not. Not everybody wants to linger. <laughs> That's okay. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. There are moments we'll never know if we just rush to the next thing on the list. Let, let, me, let me give you something real quick in the scripture. I may summarize it, may read you parts of it. You know it. It's the two men who were walking on the road to Emmaus. Jesus had died and was buried. And now that, that, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about what had happened, of course. And, and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Now you talk about a moment. But remember, they don't recognize this moment. They don't know. They know something. Listen to me. They know something's happening. Because later they're going to talk about it and say, remember how our hearts burn within us while we walk in the way? So they're sensing something, but they don't know what it is. Jesus is walking with them. He has appeared to many at this point, okay? We had the resurrection, but it, the word hadn't gotten around everybody. They don't have these text messages and amber alerts and that sort of thing. And so, you know, we got somebody missing from, I don't know what would be if somebody's missing from a grave. We've got a... Something alert. We got alert, alert, okay? Uh, grave alert. He's gone. And, and so the word hadn't fully gotten around. These, these two of them are walking down the road, the seven mile trip down from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They're talking about what's happened. And Jesus walks with them. And, and, and he says, Hey, what are y'all discussing? What are y'all talking about? And they stood still, their faces downcast. Notice their attitude. Notice their. They're downcast, and one of them named Cleopas said, Are you a visitor to Jerusalem? You don't know what's been happening here? What things, he said, about Jesus of Nazareth. Must have been interesting to hear his name said. He was a prophet, powerful and were indeed before God and all the people. The chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But listen, listen. But we hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Listen to this verse. And what is more, it's the third day. Since all this took place, how can you say that without a ding, 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 ding going on? Because Jesus says, go ahead, 
destroy the temple, but on the third day, I'll build it back. He kept telling them about this third day. Man, I mean, every, all the promises it triggers in me of the third day and his resurrection. They heard what Jesus said would happen. But why is it when we're going through something that he said, don't think it's strange concerning this fiery trial that's trying you. We're going through. You can't have a resurrection without a death. If you're going through something that, that he said you'd go through, why, why, why are you so distraught about it? Because it's only taking you to the to resurrection morning. In, in addition, he says, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning. They didn't find his body. They, they, they told us they'd seen a vision of angels who, who, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women said. They did not see. And he said, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all those things. The prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? I mean, don't we have to go through this to get here? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scripture concerning himself. And as they approached the village to where they were going, Jesus acted as if he would be going farther. And here's where, here's the pivot point. Partially in an act of hospitality, and God honors hospitality. God honors it when you're hospitable to others, when you treat others well that you don't have to. Strangers and people that aren't in your family, when you bless them and love them, God notices that. There, there is a response of heaven, a favor to hospitality. Another, another message. And it's also part because they're sensing something in the spirit. Our hearts are burning within them. Because they said, why don't you come in and have supper with us? Why don't you come in and stay with us? It's almost evening. And so he said, okay, I'll stay with you. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and he gave thanks like he did at that last supper. And he broke it. And he began to give it to them. And then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Do you see how they extended the moment? Do you see how he could have gone, but in this moment they extended it. And when they did, something happened in their hearts. They got a revelation. He was revealed to them. When you're talking with God and your hearts are beginning to burn, some of your hearts are burning a little bit. I'm not talking about acid reflux stuff. I'm talking about inside your heart is burning. And you're sensing God's doing something in my life right now. You know, there's something, I don't know quite what it is. And the other little voice on the shoulder says, let's go to lunch, go to lunch. It's, it's after 11 o'clock. Does he know? Point to your watch. Kind of look like this and maybe he'll see us. The other voice says, linger. Don't be in a rush. Linger. Heart's burning, and God's whispering, take time. So, Lex, Bailey, team, don't, don't, don't just try to extend things for extending, but some of those moments, just linger. Linger right there. I tell that with you and your your family, I, I ask you today, I'm, I'm going to, we'll fill the last blank in later, okay? God will help you sleep tonight. It's another story I wanted to tell, but I won't. Another scripture to go to, I won't. What I want to say to you is today, eat your food a little bit slower, just a little slower. When you look into the eyes of the person you love, look into their eyes a little longer. When you hug them, hold them just a little closer, a little longer. Some of you have done that when a family's lost a little child and you say, I want to go home and hug my kids. Why? Because there's something in me right now. I just want to hold them. I just want to be close. That's what you need to do today, not after something else happens somewhere else with someone else. Today, savor the moment. 
All right, let's, let's you, you guys come up. <clears throat> I, I feel like that the Holy Spirit is here and it's, it's touching us. and it's, He's doing something in some heart today and I, I hope it's yours. I hope it's yours. It's, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only feeling this. If it's just me, I won't linger here forever. Um, it used to be an old chorus, A flat. It would go a lot better with my other Genesis story, but it fits here. We haven't rehearsed this, so I think it's a... They used to say, reach out. You get a microphone. Here we go. Reach out and touch the Lord as He... Passes by, you'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment, your need he'll supply. So reach out. every need in the room I pray for right now. For those listening at home, I pray the Holy Spirit would just grip their heart. Father, let us take hold. Let us seize the moment. Let us take hold of you today. His clutch, His caress. It's also a good time for families. If you're here with, if you're here with a family member, and your spouse. Doesn't doesn't matter if this is not the best time. If y'all had a fuss on the way here, this would be the perfect time, perfect moment to just let that melt away. It doesn't matter. Now's the perfect moment. Just reach over to that person. Reach over to mama. Reach over to sister. Reach over to husband. If you're here by yourself, just let God put his arms around you today. Just take a moment. 
let's linger just a moment more in His presence. God's peace rest upon your lives. May God's whisper fall upon your heart. May God give you courage to do what he has commissioned and called you to do. May you feel his face shine upon you. May you glow having been in his presence. God bless you. May he bring us back together again. Jesus' name. Good man.